Hi guys, and in this tutorial series, we're going to be creating a scene, looks something like this. So this is the ring from Lord of the Rings. Um, so this is mainly going to be kind of a, a texturing tutorial. We're going to be using Cycles Renderer. I'm going to be taking you through how I generated this texture here, how we did some masking, um, the way we created the glow effect, um, also the texturing for the surface that the ring is sitting on here how we got this kind of bump maps on there, etc. Um, so the actual modeling is going to be really quite straightforward. I'm just going to run you through the modeling in this first tutorial before we get on then to the um, rendering part. So the scene is going to be really simple. It's just basically a camera and these, these two objects. So I'm going to start a new project file here. I'll delete the default object. So I'm going to start off by creating a cylinder object here. And I want the cylinder to have no caps, so we'll choose nothing. Other than that, we're good to go. Um, so I'm going to scale it on the Z axis down slightly. I'm going to go to our front view. And now we just need to shape the ring a little bit. So. Um, to do this, we'll tab into edit mode and we go to tools, loop cuts, and start off by sticking a loop cut in the middle there. We'll hit S to scale, pull the edge of the ring out, and then oops, easy. we will make another loop cut here and another loop cut here. I'm going to select those two edges. And then we'll hit S to scale and we'll scale those out also so that the ring is going to have the curved shape to it. All right, and then I think I just want to scale it a little bit on the Z axis on the top and the bottom rings. So back to the front view, we'll select top edges here and the bottom edges and we're just going to scale those on the Z stretch that out a little bit it's quite a chunky ring and that's pretty much it so tap back out of edit mode and smooth shading now we're going to add to this a solidify modifier so come over to the modifiers and we'll drop in a solidify modifier I want to thicken up this top edge here make the ring thicker so again, it's quite a chunky ring, so we'll go for quite a bit of thickness to it. And then we'll add another modifier, which will be a subdivision surface. And I'm going to increase that to two, so we get a nice smooth surface. And now we can adjust our thickness so that we get a little bit more thickness to the top of the ring there. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode. If we want to make that top edge a little less rounded, We'll get our loop cuts again here. I'm just going to pull that top edge up a little bit and I'll do the same at the bottom. I'm just going to pull it down slightly. All right, so that gives us though quite a stiff edge on there. So I think I'm just going to adjust these. Put the loop cut in maybe don't bring it up quite so high. I'm going to have it lower there. Probably just on the halfway point. We'll be good enough. Uh, so we still keep that rounded edge there. I'm just going to take the thickness down slightly. Okay, I think that is about it for the modeling of the ring. Very, very basic, straightforward thing to do. Um, so next we're going to drop in a plane object which will scale up. And then we're going to want to position this so the ring is sitting towards the front corner-ish, somewhere around there. Because our camera is going to be viewing something like this angle. So I'm going to go to a front view and we'll drop in now our camera. So we'll create 
camera object. We'll rotate this around and then we'll select normal so we can drag this back into position. Move the camera up and back. Now I'm also going to rotate it down slightly so we're looking slightly down the ring and in our camera settings I'm going to adjust the focal length so we're zoomed in a little bit so just a matter now really of lining up the camera I want to see a little bit of the table beneath the ring, so we'll rotate a little bit more, so we're getting more of a downwards looking view. Something more like that, and we'll place the ring in that lower, lower corner there. Now it's just a matter of moving our plane so that it fills almost fills our view something like that okay and that is pretty much it for the modeling now um, I'm going to add in an object which is going to be a empty object and we're going to use this as our focal point for the camera you'll see why later on when we set the depth of field so this focal point for the camera is basically going to be just here in front of the ring there. So we select our camera and in our focus we're going to choose the empty object. Now I'm going to name these objects just to keep things nice and tidy. So this will be the focal point object. The plane will be the ground and the cylinder is the ring. Okay, and there's our camera. So the camera is going to focus on the focal point area there. And we're going to adjust the f-stop also. Um, but we want to change first into the cycles render up here. So now you see our, in our aperture, we can choose a f-stop and the number blade. So I'm going to go for six. So that's the number of blades on the aperture. If you understand about cameras and apertures, then you'll know what this is. But basically, the f-stop is going to control our um, focal point. So how much of distance behind this focal point is going to be slightly blurred. If you remember from um, the uh, final render that I showed at the beginning, the background was a little bit out of focus and that's what we're going to do by controlling this f-stop number here so if you understand cameras you'll know what I'm talking about if not you'll see later on as we adjust the f-stop how the background goes out of focus um, now over in our world here I'm going to click use nodes and for the color I'm going to have an environment texture and the environment texture that I'm going to use it's over in here will be this one which is available for download from the um, zip file in the link at the bottom of the video so that's our basic setup done if we were to render this now you see we've got some lights in this in the scene there and if we go to our camera view um, you can see how what, what we can see there from the camera. So things are beginning to look okay, but obviously we need to put the textures in and that's what I'm going to do now. Just very basic texturing to begin with. So we'll switch back out into solid view. Okay, so to begin with, I'm gonna just create a basic gold texture. 
So I'll create a new texture here. We'll call this gold. And then we're going to go over into our node editor to set up this gold texture. So we'll drag open a new window here. And we'll switch to the node editor. Close this, it's not needed. All right, so I'm going to add an RGB. So we'll delete the diffuse to start with. So we'll add a um, color, which will be, an, just search here, just the RGB. We want to add an RGB shader. And then this is going to plug into two glossy shaders. So we'll add into here one and we'll shift and D to duplicate. So the color output from here is going to plug into the color of both of these glossy shaders. And then we're going to add in a mix shader. which will plug into the surface here. And into this mix shader, we're going to plug the two outputs of the two glossy shaders. And finally, we're going to have a layer weight shader, which is going to plug into the, the um, facing. You're going to plug into the factor of our mix shader. And that is basically it. All we need to do then is set up our color. So select a suitably golden looking color. I'm going to make that quite bright. And then in our two glossy shaders, the top one we're going to change to sharp. The bottom one we're going to leave as CGX. And then we're just going to adjust the roughness of these. So the top one will be 0.001. And the one below, we'll leave at 0 0.2. Let's come over to our rendered view. You'll see that now we have quite a nice looking gold texture there. So that's pretty basic setup of this texture. And I'm going to then put in another texture for the surface. So we'll select that, create a new texture, and we'll name this material our ground material. So the basic setup for this will be we're going to add in a image texture. So once we put this in hit control T and it will put in the other relevant parts and what we're going to do from here is just choose instead of UV we're going to change this to generated as our vector. Then we're going to open up an image texture. Now this one again is included in the zip file at the bottom of this video. We want to get the Middle Earth image texture. Okay. And then the output of this is simply going to plug into the color of our diffuse. And voila, there we have our map is now visible on the table below our object there. So now you may want to adjust the orientation of the map if you want to have some different details on display. It looks like this map is actually kind of all of the text is written upside down so you may want to rotate things around a little bit so you can either do that here by rotating the, the texture itself. Say for example, if you rotate this 180 degrees, it'll turn the texture around, it flips it, just choose the correct axis. There, so that's now rotated things around. Now you can see it's all um, correct. You can see we've got the Middle Earth written there and Mordor over here, etc., etc. Um 
Now I'm going to move the plane object back a little bit. So we've got, yeah, it's looking, it's looking good. Okay, um, so just a matter of moving the plane around moving the texture around until you have whichever part of the um, the map you want to be in view. So it's down to your own personal preference. So there is the very basic setup of this scene. Obviously there's still a lot more work to do, but we'll cover that in the next tutorial where we'll be doing more work on the texturing and the nodes. And what we're going to do in the next tutorial is look at doing the um, textured surface of the tabletop before we get into doing the um, texturing of the ring.